Um, we are live right now. I am so happy and proud to be welcoming you to this historic event. Today, we celebrate the mainnet launch of Swarm and the 1.0 release of B. My name is Michel Plur, and as a communications lead for the Swarm Foundation, I will be your host during this event. Let's go back in time a little bit to 2015, when Ethereum was still just an idea. A team of brilliant people came together to create the world's computer. For something to be called a computer, you need three parts, a processor, storage, and messaging to send data to the processor and back. Ethereum plays that processor role, messaging would be done by Whisper, and the storage component is what became Swarm. It was conceived by Gavin Wood and brought to, a, brought to reality by Victor Tron and Daniel Nagy. For years, Swarm was researched and prototyped from within the Ethereum Foundation. Around a year ago, Swarm graduated from the Ethereum Foundation to become its own independent foundation. The vision of a safe, fair, and decentralized internet where people can communicate privately and where users can share data without worrying a man in the middle is looking over their shoulders goes back to the cypherpunk movement in the early 90s. It was always known that the solution would lie in peer-to-peer -peer mechanics, but what was missing was an accounting system that made sure that every participant acts in a fair and balanced way. With Swarm's mainnet launch and the bus token distribution, we now finally have all the ingredients in place to run a network of nodes who have the incentive to create a healthy and solid network. In the next three hours or so, you will be hearing from the founders of Swarm, the development team, the people running the ecosystem, and you will also see a lot of demos uh, of apps and solutions that use Swarm to achieve their previously impossible mission and vision. We will also have a team AMA at the end of the program, which might be performed in Discord. Um, the QR code you will be seeing uh, throughout this event leads you to our Discord community, where moderators and community members are standing ready to welcome you. So let's get started with this information-packed event. And I would love to go to our first speaker, um, Eknir, uh, please, if you are here, show your face and talk to us. Hi. Hey, there you are, my friend. Hey. How are you doing? Well, it's been like, very busy nice. the last day, and I'm very excited about everything, but um, I'm doing well. Yeah, how much sleep did you get like the last couple of nights? Uh, the last night I went to bed at the decent time, but before that it was like three or four nights. But uh, yeah, it's good. Awesome. So uh, if I'm correct, you have prepared a presentation for us? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's dive into that. Right. Uh, now you're supposed to see my screen, right? Yeah, exactly. We see your screen. Now it's in full screen mode. And now you don't have any black bars, correct? All right. Yes. So let's start with my presentation. Um, Hello World B. And I'm going to explain what is different today from tomorrow, but I meant yesterday. So what is different today from yesterday? Well, first of all, B made it, you know, like we have the first stable version, version 1.0. I think the developer team right now is like doing really the last things, but in the upcoming, I would say half an hour, hour, the first stable version v1.0 will be released on uh, on github and then rolled out later today so we made it to the base camp and we have time right now to kind of consolidate and see where we are standing and enjoy the view so um, i'm really happy personally about this i'm really happy uh, to be part of the swarm team and to like experience this moment with everybody so yes and um, yeah, so about B, right? So if you go to our GitHub, you see this. So for those who have been, I don't know, living under a stone or like maybe tuning into the Swarm for the first time. So B is a Swarm client implemented in Golang. It is the basic building block for the Swarm network, which is a private, decentralized and self-sustaining network for the permissionless publishing and access of your application data. So B was the very was the third iteration actually of this whole swarm project. 
B consists of more than 100,000 lines of code created by 1,201 commits. And the B project itself started a little bit more than a year ago. But again, the B was already the third iteration. And B received contributions from 36 contributors. So this is much bigger than our team. So we also have open source contributors. And B, of course, is not the only repository that we have. Uh, we have in total uh, as a swarm, we have 121 repositories that all work together into creating this, this swarm network. But B definitely is, is a very important one because it contains the client code that's right now people all around the world can run and are running already. B is there for node operators to join the Swarm network and uh, put their storage to, to use for the Swarm network. B is there for dev developers to make decentralized applications. And above all, I would say B is there for anybody who wants back the digital freedom. So, hello world. B. And what is different today from yesterday? Well, the stable release. And then what does this really mean, right? The stable release. Um, well, for those who have been working with us for the last half a year and, and bearing with us and trying to keep up to date, you probably know that, that B so far has been anything but stable. I mean, we have been rolling out the code so fast that we had to break our testing network a couple of times, right? But that's why a testing network is there, is to test and to be broken. But with the 1.0 release, we are releasing it on the mainnet and the mainnet will be stable. But the mainnet also will have the real utility token, BCC. So we're going to see the incentives playing out for real. B contains all the essential features for the swarm to work. And we provide more stability for developers and for node operators. And I go into each of these points. So the B nodes work with BCC, which keeps node operators honest and ensure collaboration. And we have kind of two subsystems inside the B that are working. So we have the Swarm accounting protocol, which allows node operators to earn money by providing the bandwidth services. And basically, it helps everybody to collaborate with each other to route all the requests in the network. And then we have the post stamps, and this very shortly ensures optimal storage allocation over this big shared network all around the world. Then I think it's important that the node operators earn BCZ because they are providing their service, and the end users pay the BCZ because they're using the service for the network. And it's powered by the XDAI sidechain. All right, so B also contains all the essential features for Swarm to work. And what does it mean? So the essential characteristics of Swarm are, well, of course, it's a decentralized storage and communication service, but it has privacy preserving and permissionless upload and download robust defenses against blocking or changing access to content once it is published, auto-scaling with increased demands, integrity protected content, and eventually forgetting content that is no longer relevant to preserve. So for those people, you know, like the numbering is a bit weird, but yeah, I was, what I said, we've been working very hard, but I think you get it. And yeah, so these are the points. I don't have time to go into each of those, but if you are triggered by this and you're very curious to hear like how on earth Swarm and the Swarm network can, can realize all these, these points, I invite all of you to read the Swarm white paper, which is 13 pages. I think it's very accessible for people to read. And then if you're really interested and you want to dive even more further and, and learn more about the vision and the background, you can read the book of Swarm. So both of these papers are recommended to read if you want to know how Swarm has these characteristics, how it works. Then the last part, I already mentioned it, more stability for developers and node operators. So shortly from this point onwards, we care about your data and we care about not breaking your application. 
And in practical, this means that, um, yeah, whenever the Swarm network receives protocol updates, if needed and possible, we are going to provide the migration paths uh, to migrate your data. If you are using or uh, consuming the APIs uh, or you're consuming the data in the network, it's good to know that all the APIs are versioned. So I advise you to directly reference one of those fixed version APIs. And all the APIs, endpoints, and data structures are supported for at least three months, so that will give you ample time to update your uh, application. But of course, Swarm is also a network, and uh, it's, it's, it's a rather complex piece of software that's going to be run all around the world. So we need to also have this um, possibility uh, to do an emergency response. And an emergency response kind of like yeah, then we cannot adhere, of course, to the, to the three months um, backwards compat compatibility. But these are only for very critical bugs that would severely impact the retrievability or upload possibility of content in the network. Or for those kind of bugs that may cause the loss of BCC for, for node operators. So these are rather critical, of course. And um, whenever there is such an emergency, very emergent bug, um, you can be assured that we will update you as soon as possible. Yeah, and then the last point, um, I want to mention it as well. Always keep a backup of your data, especially in the beginning. And what does it mean? So we want to have it there for you to be able to repair your data in the network and also to facilitate migration if this is needed. Um, it's very easy. You should always upload your content with the Swarm pin header to true. And you also keep a local back backup of all your data on your own file system. Yeah. Well, let's start B. There we go. Thank you. Amazing, uh, Eknir. Uh, I can imagine you feel very excited right now about all this. Um, you know, the only thing that, that I really, really, really want to ask you is what about the airdrop? Because in this court, you know, there were such uh, a number of, of questions about the airdrop. So can you shed some light on that? Yeah, I can. I, I can even shed a slide on it. Oh, you have well, a slide on that? <laughs> Here you are. So I didn't put in too much effort for this slide because I think the communications team was formed already did an amazing job. So well, anyway, I would like to reference everybody to our post on Medium. The Swarm airdrop is finishing June 21st. That's the date. So you can all find it with that. Um, but there's going to be like a couple of phases. I think it's important that you know it's referenced in this blog post, but I just repeat it right now. So June 21st, this evening, the trusted nodes stop operating. So these are the nodes who have been running on the girly node and who are kind of gathering uh, who is uh, getting get like checks, right? Um, we're also going to reset our network. So there will be a test network um, from tomorrow onwards, but the test network will have a different set of boot nodes. And if you still want to run the test net node, which I highly advise, please don't try to migrate your old, old node. Just start a node anew, right? Um, June 12th is the last moment to cash out your checks. Uh, in June 15, you can see your girly ABCZ balance on airdrop.eastswarm.org. July 22, ABCZ freeze, and August the 2nd, BCZ airdrop on XDAI. Awesome. I think it, it might be interesting to just explain a little bit more. Like, so we're dropping the BCC on XDAI, right? Not on Ethereum mainnet. Yeah. Can you, can you maybe explain why we are doing that? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, the whole reason of this airdrop, right, is to incentivize, um, to, to ensure that the tokens are there around in the network and the tokens in the end are there to be used, right? And um, Swarm, what I already said, we are working with the XDAI sidechain uh, is, is operating the Swarm network. So, of course, we could send this XDAI on the mainnet, right? But then people need to convert it to the, to the sidechain. So, just by dropping it on the sidechain, people have it immediately at the place and they can start using it. 
Yeah. Yeah. That seems like <laughs> like a convenient. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be doing that in the coming weeks. So, uh, Eknir, thank you so much for your presentation and for being here, and especially for the amazing job you did, um, you know, getting be ready for me at launch. It's, yeah, it has been a ride. Thanks. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, so we can uh, go to the next um, speaker or the next guest. I, I don't want to call this person a guest because he's been um, part of the team for such a long time. And um, well, I can always say like um, my friend Wojtek, are you there? Hello, Michelle. Yes, I'm here. Oh, you are amazing. So Wojtek, um, you have something really, really beautiful to show us today. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about it with you. I hope you can just demo it and show it and I leave it up to you. Yeah, that's, that's the aim to show it and to demo it to the world. Thank you very much, Michelle. Uh, so uh, with, with the launch of the uh, Swarm Network, uh, we realized that uh, there is a need for a, for a very easy access uh, and for testing purposes to your files and to uh, and and to upload stuff to the network. Um, and this is what a gateway is. So basically it's an access point to a network. Uh, it allows you to upload and download files uh, from the Swarm network. And um, some of you may, may remember that we already had uh, a gateway, but uh, for the occasion of the Swarm uh, of the V1.0, uh, we needed to step up the game a little bit and together with the rest of the Swarm team and, and a designer, uh, I think we came up with a really nice uh, new gateway that I'm very happy to show to you today. Uh, so let me try and share my screen. I hope you guys can see it. It's working perfectly. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so this is the new gateway. Uh, it's a uh, as the catch line says, it's the easiest way to share and access your files on the Swarm network. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and let's try it. Uh, so I'm going to click to share. It's going to show me uh, the features and the limitations of the, of the gateway, uh, but this is a one-time thing. And once I agree with it, I can uh, uh, very easily drag and drop files. So uh, I'm a big cat lover and these are my two cats. Uh, Sherry and Gustav or Gustavo, uh, uh, which is what uh, the internet is for to share uh, to, to share cats, and now uh, we can do that with uh, Swarm as well. Uh, so uh, let me upload these files, and as you can see, uh, once I upload, I get the web link, which is directly the the link to the gateway, or I can also get the Swarm hash. Uh, but let's go with the, with the web link so that I have the full access to this file. Uh, and as I try to download it, I actually see the preview. Uh, if the file has been uploaded with the gateway, I actually see the preview of uh, the file. Uh, I see some information about it, like the size, uh, the, uh, what, what, what type it is, and I can uh, directly download it and access it from the gateway. If I don't have, um, if I don't have the, uh, the, the full link, uh, or if I upload it with some other tool, uh, like for example, the Swarm CLI, that's uh, Attila will demo, I can always go to the access page, paste the uh, link here, and go ahead and, uh, and find the file and download it again. So, uh, as you can see, this is also a very mobile friendly, so you can just go on your phone, you can uh, uh, snap a picture and you can directly upload it and share it with your friends. Um, and uh, we hope you're going to like this tool. We had a, a lot of fun building it uh, and there's a lot more to come uh, from it as well. Um, and that's pretty much it from my side. Well, thank you so much, Wojtek. That that simply looks amazing, and and with your cats in um, in that in that gateway, it, it it looks even more amazing. Do you realize you just chunked and fragmented your cats? I know, I know, but uh, at, at least 
you know, they are pretty much all around the world with me, right? No matter where I go. That's that's a, a lovely thought. And I think I think we can say that your data is somewhere spread all around the world. But when you need it, just go to the gateway and all the chunks will magically come back and, um, you know, and your cats will be back with you. Wojtek, thank you so much for the extremely hard work you have been doing uh, working on that uh, on that gateway. I'm, I'm really proud that I can be working with you. I, I really mean that. So thank you so much. And I will see you in a, in a few. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, well, next up, um, we have Attila. I hope I pronounced it right because I've been practicing this like for, for almost a year now. So Attila, if you are there, please show your face and, and um, unmute yourself um, because you're also going to have like pretty awesome demos for us as far as I understood. Um, are you there, Attila? Yes, Michel, can you hear me? Hey, there you go. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah? How uh, much sleep did you get like the last couple of days? Well, I try to keep at least six hours a night, so That's I'm fun. quite relaxed. Okay. Hey, let's, lose, let's not lose time with chit chat. We can do that later. Uh, I, I'm really curious about what you're going to show us. So please go ahead. Let me share my screen. I prepared the presentation. for decentralized applications and browser-based applications that is most likely written in JavaScript. And basically we are working on making these decentralized applications as more possible and easy. And the team is currently five people and we are working hard on several projects at the same time to deliver like JavaScript browser magic and also command line stuff. So what we are doing is basically we can divide it to four major parts. We are working on APIs, we are working on developer tooling, research and collaboration, and community and sandbox projects. And I will, I don't go too deeply inside these topics, but I would like to give you a full picture as well as some demos. So our current projects are BJS, the Swarm CLI tool, a dashboard, uh, a Swarm browser extension, and the Swarm gateway, which Wojtek just demoed. So the BJS is a JavaScript client library for connecting to the B decentralized storage from JavaScript. It provides full B API functionality in JavaScript and we keep the versions in lockstep with the B releases. So at the same day, the B version, new B version is released. We release a new BJS version that supports the same functionality that is released or if there is any breaking changes, we support those. Also, our other projects are, are built on top of BGS. So we also release our other projects on the same day as well. So it means that like if you are using any of our projects that comes from uh, Swarm, then basically you can be sure if you download the latest version, it's going to work or at least it's going to fail gracefully. At least tells you what's the problem. And but I would like to show you a demo of BGS, but it's like a client side library. So it's not that easy to, to demo. I can, like basically it provides the, the B API functionality at this moment and it's pretty complete. So it has every API implemented and tested and we use it in projects to make sure that it works well. So one of these projects is this Swarm CLI tool, which is a CLI tool for Swarm and B client operations. You can use it for convenience I think it's much better and much more convenient to use than using curl. And also you can use it or we envision using it for automation, for example, uh, GitHub jobs. And, you know, we imagine that people will build websites eventually for Swarm and then this could be like part of your build pipeline and stuff like this. So it's pretty complete. It has comments for pinning, identity, feed, check, stamps, uh, ESS sending and receiving, and also uploading files and checking your uh, B node status. 
and uh, I don't have a, a, a demo because I think like uh, writing CLI stuff is not that exciting, but actually Aaron has prepared some demos already, which is on our readme. So you can see it's like how it works in, in operations. So you can simplify buying post-it sums with it. It gives you uh, a lot of convenience uh, functionality. So you don't have to write the full amount. For example, you can have, uh, uh, <clears throat> you can use like uh, suffixes and stuff. Uploading works automatically like as it should. Create, you can create and manage several identities. And when you are using, uh, like when you are creating identities, it provides you an interactive, uh, uh, like dialogues for confirmation. And it, it provides you like uh, very friendly uh, operations. And also uploading to a feed, it helps you uh, selecting, for example, the, the stamp for your action. And when it uploads the files, then when it starts to uh, uh, update the feed, you can just select your feed, uh, your identities, and then it will use that for updating your feed. So if you have tried this before, you may know that this is very like cumbersome to use. You have to copy and paste this long hex string, which I like. <clears throat> The post-it stamps are very long hex IDs and then the identities can be those. And we were thinking of how we could make this more convenient. And I think we are getting there. So this is one project I wanted to talk about. And the other project is um, uh, what I want to show a demo is B dashboard. So B dashboard is an admin interface for B node operations. It's basically built with web technologies. It's like a website. It's a React app that you can install on your machine. And once you open it, it connects to your B node. And then from that, you can see like the status of your B node. So it looks like this. Um, <clears throat> your My B node is running as expected. It prints tells me the version, the public keys, like necessary information. I can use it to upload and download files to the network. Uh, I can manage my post-it stamps from here directly. And also I can manage my checks from here. So I can withdraw deposit. Also I can cash out from here directly. So also if you have tried the command line before, I think this is a significant step forward in like helping people uh, use it more easily because uh, like we imagine that a lot of people are not familiar with the command line and essentially they can use these kind of tools that helps them navigate visually. And there is one more thing I wanted to talk about today is that we are working on a Swarm browser extension. Currently it's proof of concept, but we are working hard on getting it to a public release. Basically we are doing a lot of browser security and API research in this project and then the Swarm extension currently provides secure context, uh, connection management, and BJ, BJS API integration, and also post-it stamp integration. We, we imagine that this research could point us in the future to defining how dApps could be working securely in the browser environment and even more. So this was my presentation mostly. So to recap, like, on the API side, we are working on BGS, developer tooling Swarm CLI, research and collaboration currently Swarm extension, community and sandbox project is the B dashboard and gateway what Voitech showed to you. And we have many plans and we are planning to grow the team. So if you are interested, connect to us and we will hopefully find uh, like the future together. What, what a beautiful sentence to end with, Attila. Um, you can stop sharing your screen now, I think. Uh, Attila, thank you so much for your presentation. You said like uh, uh, that the, the BCLI is not really interesting or something like that, or that it's boring. I, I don't find this boring. I actually think that you guys did like an amazing job. And what I always am so happy about is that you, know, you guys do like the, the entire package, right? Like your documentation is in order. You, you have like tutorials, you, you, have your, you have your stuff, you know, it, it all just works. Um, maybe this is um, uh, interesting to know for developers and people who want to play around with it. If they, if they uh, want to have some support or they have some questions for you, uh, can they find you somewhere? 
Yes, so I'm usually on Discord on the develop on Swarm channel. It is about like developing applications on top of Swarm. And I'm happy to answer all kinds of questions. Also, not only about like the, the projects that we support, but also I, I would like to hear about projects that people come up with and help them realize it or at least give advice and brainstorm together. Yes, it's all it's always fun if you if you do something with Swarm or with, with like uh, BJS, um, definitely come and tell us because it's just a lot of fun uh, for the team that, you know, that this stuff is uh, being used. Um, Attila, thank you so much for your presentation and I'll be seeing you like later, I hope. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. So um, now we have a very, I think, I, I would call this a reality check. So we're going to Chert, and Chert is going to take us through, um, you know, telling the story of our ecosystem because you know we have a brilliant uh, ecosystem. Chert is basically, can I say, leading this effort. Uh, Chert. Yes, I'm trying to uh, to make this thing uh, happen. Uh, so coordinating stuff and so on and you're doing an amazing job so i'll just you know hand it over to you you have like a big segment in the program so just go ahead and kick it off thanks Chert. thank you michelle thank you michelle so uh hello uh, my name is Chert. i will uh now um talk a bit about the ecosystem so we know that swarm does not exist by itself but it uh, needs to fulfill the needs of its users and the ecosystem of apps using it Therefore, initiatives are in motion to help the ecosystem adopt Swarm as easily as possible and to bootstrap a paradigm shift in how to handle data. Fair data society principles play a central role in these efforts as ethical guidelines are necessary to adopt from the very start, we believe. Data of different kinds, can, data is of different kinds and can be very sensitive in nature, especially when talking about personal data. However, the siloing of data must stop. Personal data should be under the control of individuals. And we believe that data sovereignty is one of the key features that following the principles should enable. The other important aspect is interoperability. To make silos is obsolete, data must be able to flow between apps, making switching apps seamless for the user. This is made easier with decentralized storage, although it is just the first of many steps on the long road. The ecosystem part will try to demonstrate the efforts done in regard to data sovereignty and interoperability and a lot of efforts are done under the umbrella of the Fair Data Society using its developed toolset. The focus of current efforts is on providing public data sets of interest until the tools we use have proven hardened enough to use on more sensitive data. We'll also highlight a couple of projects using Swarm for storage and uh, we aim to motivate further ideas uh, for development of the ecosystem in the community. So the first thing uh, we'll tackle will be a, bit, a little bit of a chat of, on data interoperability and data sovereignty. So I would invite Antonio now to join and Gregory if he's available. Hi Antonio. Hello. Glad to see you. Nice to see you too. So, um, I will uh, ask you a couple of questions and you give inspiring answers as, as you always do, Antonio. So, mm. yeah. Not, not my day, but just go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, there are many problems to solve to bring the technologies of the Web3 age to become mainstream. But today we put forward topics of data sovereignty and interoperability. So, how do you perceive the problem of data sovereignty? The, the data today is being siloed. How deep is this problem? Is it worth solving? So First of all, I think that the, the problem with data today is the incentives that we have to, to gather that. We have multiple private companies that we all know uh, trying to know the, the size of, uh, of, their, of our underwear in order to sell more products. And this is a very twisted way to get, to get the data, to gather the, that information from us. And the winning, the, 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 a way to twist it, it's possible, but it requires to get away from this siloed ecosystem that only benefits the owner and the creator of the, of the, of the silo. And, and a good example for, for this, I would say it's the, the promise that the, the, the data, data marketplace could benefit all the participants in the marketplace, not only the users or the, for instance, the advertisers, if we want to keep on with the advertising thing, 
the advertisers, but also the marketplace. And for instance, if I if I own my data of the purchases that I make, and that's that's a no-brainer. No it's 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 I, I do own it. It's pure. It's my data. If I own it, and I actually put it into a marketplace with permission data, somebody else can run analytics on top of that and create some uh, some elasticity curves to, to 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 match demand or to match switching. If I buy, for instance, uh, uh, a pair of uh, Nike or shoes uh, or Max, uh, maybe they can find out that after six months after, I'm eager to switch to Adidas. And uh, if that's the case, in a public set of data, they can actually give the, the, the Adidas for free because I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm going to be a recurring customer. And that's a win-win for everybody. That's a win-win for Adidas that actually sold me a couple of pair of sneakers. It's a win-win for me. I actually got some sneakers at a discounted price or, or, or a very low price. And that's a win-win for the marketplace. You can tag on top of that. And that changed completely the, the, the picture that we're in. It's not about pushing ads to you, which is actually the web 2.0 uh, in main incentives, but it's a different way. But the only way to do it, the only way to do that is to create that bridges between different data. And the only way to do it is to have the users, the real data generators, uh, become the, the the sovereigns of their information. Thank you, Antonio. So that's very deep. And um, so actually, uh, the the next question is about a topic that you sort of tackled at uh, your last uh, um, the last time we had uh, an event. Uh, so you talked a lot about interoperability, um, and it is a large and complex problem. Many standards exist. In theory, we should uh, already have interoperability. So do you think it's a, more of a technical problem or more of a social problem to tackle? What is the best way to approach it? I would say it's a social problem, but it's, it's complicated. It's complicated because people are using a lot of tools, but, uh, uh, but the, the, it's a kind of, a, we need to, under, to, to start thinking uh, how to share, how, to, how our data is going to be created and therefore how are we gonna be able to share it? It's not only we are used to just don't care about that, and it's a it's a very it's a pity because there's a lot of value in the, in, in the data that we that we actually manage, so this uh, we create. So I would say it's a kind of both. Not only it's around creating standards. Well, there, there's a big old joke with from XKCD that I'm not gonna go for that. But creating a standard is a very complicated thing. Uh, but the what, what could happen is that if we are actually understand the value of owning our own data and, and that, that needs to happen with the different tools and that I, I hope that we can enlighten, give a little hint of, of them today. So actually we think uh, that sover data sovereignty and interoperability are, are connected with sovereignty being somewhat dependent on uh, interoperability, of course. Um, but how do, do you think that uh, fair data principles come into play here? So they're not defining any standard, are they, yeah, they're maybe helpful in um, this respect anyway? Hmm. Well, that's a complex question. I would say because it goes to back to ethics and to morals and what do you think of the data that should be shared or should not. Uh, but it's, uh, this is why it's in, it's, since it's difficult to create a standard, the way to do it is to create a going, up, going higher up in the, in, the, in the values of the chain. So this is where we go from, from, from the actual code, the standard, to uh, an, an, a higher level, which is the, the values behind what is going to be shared, what should be shared, and what should not. OK, Antonio. So let's move on to, to, to usage of Swarm. So let's say that you were talking to a startup, maybe developing dApps. So how would you explain Swarm? Why, why should they use it? Well, it's really fun. It? It's still really fun to, to, for, for any startup to use it because, uh, you know, as a startup guy, I, I kind of I myself created a couple of ventures and they want, well, the different, different outcomes, I would say. Uh, but the, but the, the, the idea is that you always face this problem of how to deal with the data, you know, because you are, have logins, you have a lot of people going into your thing, going, and you have to store that, and you have to comply with regulations, and this is always a pain. It's a really, it's a big pain, and especially where it, it depends on where you live, but it, there are different places in the world, and uh, of course, it's not the same in everybody, in every place, but still, it's a pain everywhere. You have to store that, and you have to take it into account, that, that, that thing very, very well. And the good thing about, about uh, giving back the data to the people is that, to, to, the, to the actual creators, is that you don't have to keep that record. 
because you didn't know who's going in. You didn't know who's the, who's the user. You just provide the tool, you just provide the service. But the user comes, he does his thing, you get, you get paid for that, and then he goes away. And this, this is a very, very powerful thing. And I think that it can solve a lot of the problems and uh, it actually breaks the incentive, uh, the incentives problems that I were, I were talking about, we were talking about uh, five minutes ago, about how the web 2.0 is twisted and it can evolve into this new, more civilized web. So maybe the same thing, how would you explain what to do with Swarm to a CTO of a large company? What do you mean? Well, now we don't have startups, but we have an established company. So. Hmm. Several things. Uh, I would say that the, the way to do it is that the way to pitch it to a, to a, to a corporate, to a corporation would be to actually give, the, give back the promise that was there that giving back the data to the users. This is something that the corporations have done a lot. They, they brag about, yeah, we are respecting the privacy. Okay, there you go. Here's your, here's your shot. Do it. Let's see. Okay. And I think that this, this is an opportunity for actually to bring together, so unsilo the data and bring data closer to the whole ecosystem of players like large and small companies. I think this is uh, one um, major, major advantage of, of this kind of storage. Sure. So, um, Antonio, thank you. Uh, I will ask you Thanks to, to you. stay on, online uh, for, for comments. So, helping me sort of push uh, this track through, I mean, this uh, session. Uh, and um, yes, uh, now we move on to, to uh, uh, a, a demo uh, from uh, a project called Vision. And as they have put it, Swarm has helped, uh, helped them to offer patients level of services they couldn't get otherwise. Vision has been using Swarm for quite, quite, quite some time now and has already been featured at the Swarm Alpha event. So let's see what has happened since in a demonstration that uh, we can now play, please. Hello, I'm Nicola from Vision. We build a decentralized teleradiology platform using Swarm and Guest to provide better access to medical expertise in France and worldwide. I will first present you what we do with Swarm and then show you a demo of our application. First, what is a teleradiology platform and what do we do? Our job is to connect health actor, ensuring security, integrity and confidentiality of the data. We link health center, AI providers and radiologists to get the best from the human and the machine in order to deliver a medical report to the patient. Our standard workflow is a patient goes to the center to get an exam. After getting consent, we, re we retrieve their data, anonymize it and distribute it to the specialized AI. Depending on the exam, we call different AIs. Then, we provide the radiologist the result of the AI and the, medical data to, and the medical data so he can write his own report. Finally, we integrate the radiologist's report in the health facility center system. Our challenges are that we have to integrate with very heterogeneous ecosystem with sometimes very legacy technologies. Machines are, are on different private networks and actors are geographically decentralized. We started to build the platform in mid-2019 and launched it in production in end 2019 with the pre-beta Swarm version. We are using Swarm and Guest as our core stack for now three years and participated at each launch event. Here is some figure on how much we use the platform. So we have treated 17,000 plus patients since the, swarm, since the last Swarm beta launch event in February. We plugged in 12 different fa facilities and uh, two hospitals that use our system for fast COVID triage using AI only workflow. We integrated four different types of health, of health system for automating processes. Finally, a quick example of why using distributed system like Swarm is essential when managing important data. In March 2021, one of the data centers of OVH got fired. 
causing millions of websites of website to go down, losing data and backup forever. Many people thought it would be impossible, but it happened. We lost we lost half of our machines in OVH at this event, but not only our service has been merely impacted, we haven't lost any data, no medical data, no medical data were lost during this event. Now let's start the demo. Here is our main application. We have a radiologist on the left side and the health center on the right side. Everything is recorded simultaneously and the application are on two different machines to mimic the production environment. First, the health center creates the patient and then will add all the necessary medical data. We try to automatize this step as much as possible by being plugged on their system. Usually, the patient is already created with its image and the user just add, have to add the missing details. The main block time bottleneck is because of the blockchain, as we have a two second block time. So we have to find tricks to hide it from the user experience, like unlocking the next action, batching, and so on. Then the health center will send the data to the radiologist. The patient appears now on the radiologist's worklist. He then can go on by downloading the images of the patient, reading the prescription, the, the result of the AI, and analyzing the images, then he will write its, its report. The radiologist still have to download the images as he will need to process them inside its own software uh, to add uh, many features by, for example, changing contrast, zooming, and uh, handling all this medical data. Finally, he will send the report to the center. While the patient is being sent, the radiologist can go on to the next patient to avoid the time waiting for the transaction to be included in the chain. The report is then received by the health center and will be integrated in their system. Thanks for watching. So thank you, Nicola and Pierre, for this in inspiring presentation. I think that when real life Cases like these are presented and really shows the power and potential of the technology. Um, so maybe you could uh, just tune in for um, a minute. Hi, hello. Sure. Hi, yeah. everyone. Hi. Hello. So um, nice to see you. So what are your plans for the future? And when ca where, when can people, where, where can people get to know more about your project? So about our project, we have, uh, so the, obviously, our website, uh, uh, vision.ai. Uh, we have some LinkedIn. But for now, our project is uh, to uh, continue to uh, use a more swarm uh, using the, the latest version and uh, implementing more processes inside, uh, the, the ch inside the, the swarm environment. For example, the last, um, at the last event, the swarm beta, we were talking about uh, using satellite connection and uh, integrated uh, DICOM viewer. And so we managed to use uh, the satellite connection to, to connect uh, our centers that are in France and sometimes a very, very low bandwidth, which is a very big problem for uh, teleradiology because we are uh, managing uh, big, big files. And uh, so one of the next projects will be, uh, for example, to have uh, an integrated viewer. Uh, so the radiologist will be able to see the, uh, the images inside his own, uh, his own uh, environment, his own work list. And we are now working uh, on uh, some uh, way to uh, better implement the result of the AI to, to really uh, uh, create a, a free report for the radiologist so the radiologist can really focus on just uh, uh, confirming what the AI said and uh, add his own expertise as well. So, and on, uh, so, so everything uh, will be uh, sure on Swarm to handle all the logics and uh, maybe we'll add uh, uh, handling more data than just uh, the S data, but maybe all the, 
on est around to, to offer a better experience to the radiologist, connect to outer world and other uh, uh, processes, other actors, and as well as health center to manage their, uh, their environment. But you have to at the yes, so we, we, because of SWARM, we have been able to deliver an incredible value uh, to our patients. And uh, since the beginning, we are close to uh, many gigabytes, maybe terabytes uh, of uh, medical data shared with SWARM and um, delivering value into care uh, of patients. Uh, right now, we have uh, some uh, very interesting nodes with very high latency or uh, with Starlink uh, connected in the mountains. And all of this uh, use the same system, the, the SWARM system. So we'll continue to, to use it and develop it. And we have to connect uh, with a, a huge ecosystem on the main uh, network now that it's, uh, it's live. So let's continue together. And uh, actually, a few months ago, we made an experiment with a uh, as a practitioner on the other side of the world in Haiti. In Tahiti, okay. in Polynesia, we have uh, a node uh, running there also uh, so, in the data center, also in Hawaii, uh, to, de to deliver um, uh, good uh, data throughput for the radiologists that are, are doing some night hawk uh, in the other part of the world. So uh, it scales, it scales very well. Thank you, that is very uh, nice to hear. Um, so uh, we have to stress, right, that you have uh, your own Swarm sub-network, so you're not working currently on the main net, uh, but you have it. Uh, um, I think that the, um, it proves the technology, what the technology is capable of nevertheless, right? Yes. So yes. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you to all the team. Thank you very much. Thank you. So. Fair Data Society, besides guidance on principles, also provides tooling to facilitate a transition to a fairer data society. And Swarm has supported development of a stor storage layer on top of Swarm that provides additional features. The state of development should be considered experimental, but the aim is to provide a sandbox for discovering what features and functionalities are needed in the future and get a head start on the emerging fair data economy. Then the tooling inc includes FairOS DFS, a distributed file system on top of Swarm. And uh, so FairOS DFS connects uh, to a B node, but exposes its own API, allow, allowing to work with files, key value stores, and a document store. This feature should allow for experimenting with a lot of use cases and testing out ideas. The following demo will demonstrate how two users of FairOS on different computers can work with the same da data showing Swarm as the underlying storage, using Swarm as the underlying storage on the, ca on the case of a key value store. So please, if you can play the demo. Welcome to a short demo of a key value store over Swarm. Uh, this is the diagram of the setup. We have two B here, which are connected together inside here. And uh, there is one FairOS DFS connected to the first view, second FairOS DFS connected to the second B. And since these FairOS DFS expose an HTTP server, uh, I have two different HTTP clients which speak with each of them. So the idea is to create uh, something in this client and uh, see that it is visible here and do something at this client and see that it is visible here. Since all the data is stored in the decentralized fashion in the B, uh, the data should be, uh, should be updated and visible in both the places. Let's go into the demo. So the top, um, the top three terminals represent uh, the, the three things that I explained in the top. The bottom three terminals explains the bottom uh, three things. So let, let us start B first. Um, the first B and the second B, they should just join together and form a network. Let's give some few seconds. Yes, they have. And let's go to the Pharaoh's DFS. This is connecting to the 8080, which is the first B. This is connecting to the second B, which is 8081. This is the second B. Remember that the first um, uh, FairOS DFS uh, is listening on port 9090. Uh, the second one is listening on port 9091 for the clients. So let's start the client uh, in 1990. Let's start another client in 1991 so that these are two different stuff. Now, 
um, I have a user here already uh, and exported the user. The user is called user1. Uh, let's log into the user. It has a pod called pod1. Let's open the pod. Uh, pod1. Do, let's do the same here. User login user1. Uh, let's open the pod. Yeah, the, it is um, open. Now let's do something. So all the key value store starts with the key 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 v command. Uh, key v ls. There is no key value store right now. Key v new. Uh, table one let's create a table uh, so let's see that the table is here and let's see if the table is here yes it is reflected here also so let's open the table table one uh, and let's insert some data inside this uh, put I use put get uh, like commands to insert and uh, get out of the KV table uh, you can see the help to see more commands. Uh, okay, we put in table one. This is the key one, and this is the value. Uh, let's add few more key values uh, to key two and value two, key three and value three. Right now, let's see if the same is visible here. Let's open the table one. Um, let's get table one uh, key one let's see oh okay it's giving the value one key three value three let's update the value of key three um, in updated value three right so let's see uh, if we get uh, key we get table one let's see whether it shows the updated value yes thank you for the demo so that was a demo of ferroes and actually it was a nice uh, segue into into the next demo that we will go into and um as i mentioned the key value store um is what this next demo will use. And it will show a front end that displays maps on user screens. Maps are stored in FaroS as the back end. So I would uh, ask the video to play. So please know that my narrative might not be completely in sync with the video. Um, but uh, so the maps used here are from OpenStreetMaps, so the actual data. The application is called FairMaps, and the user logs in with their credentials. And you know that these are the same as we will later uh, shown or used in the fair drive demos. And the default map of the world loads. When a certain zoom level is reached, the roads, lakes, and other features become visible. Uh, you will notice um, uh, that a couple of maps are already available, but most of the world is actually blank, so no data is available. Uh, basic features of the map are available like zooming in and zooming out, uh, depending on which country's maps are available, uh, more detailed map content can be shown, but this is not the main uh, point of the demo. So the maps that are shown are loaded from FerroS DFS key value store, which is underneath using swarm storage. Um, so the, the location of any pins you put on the map, get, map gets saved into FerroS to be used later and perhaps in another application given access to the data. Adding pins and saving the data to FerroS is just a basic use case demonstrating the idea of a common storage accessible to many applications. Imagine any kind of user data that you would like to share with others, like running traps, uh, tracks, trips you took, photos you took at locations, uh, etc. So how can you spin up your own instance uh, of FairMaps? Uh, the instructions can be found on the GitHub page. Um, uh, but um, so uh, let me uh, touch upon the idea that we're getting on with this demo. It is about public data sets uh, that can be contributed by uh, a community. The, this particular use case, the idea is that anyone can create their own maps and contribute them. And the instructions are also on GitHub. Uh, in a nutshell, you must spin up your own B node, followed by starting a FerroS server. 
And you then have to prepare the maps in a proper for format. A script is available to download, download the map tiles for a specific region in the GeoJSON geo format. And another script can be used to convert the files into CSV format. Uh, an example in the video shows downloading tiles for a region around Ljubljana. Uh, FerroS DFS command line instance uh, should be started. Uh, new user is created, followed by creating a pod. A pod is a kind of a logical drive that can contain folders and files, also uh, can be a key, key value store. And the pod is uh, opened, uh, the pod is opened and a new key value store is created and then opened. And in the next steps, uh, a, a CSV file with map data is loaded into uh, a key value store. So the data is sent via FerroS into Swarm. Uh, so the terminal window showing the activity shows a lot of traffic. And after it finishes, the pod with the uh, map data is available to the user, but we additionally want to share it with the world, making it public. So after issuing the sharing command, a pod sharing reference is returned. And by using this reference, a pod could be mounted by other users and used for the maps. So, but uh, as users will not want to add individual maps to the app, uh, the idea of a map registry comes into play. A map registry is just another, another FerroS public pod that contains links to other public pods that in turn contain specific maps. So if you're a registry pod maintainer, you can add maps to it, even maps that other contribute. In the demo, we, uh, we show adding a newly created map of uh, Slovenia. And uh, later on, this uh, map will be available in the user interface of fair apps to be uh, fair maps to be uh, used by the users. So uh, the demo actually showcases showcases a straightforward scenario when uh, where an app can use publicly available registries uh, and maps as uh, data to display. But the example can be generalized to other kinds of data and uh, apps. So actually what we want to achieve with, with this demo also is uh, to give you a, a call to action. So uh, maintaining public data sets should be a community effort. And um, we ask you to join the experiment and per perhaps uh, to start become a country maintainer by providing, providing uh, maps in a shared pod. So please follow the Swarm newsletter and blogs to stay tuned uh, and up to date on, on this idea. So. This is uh, um, this was about fair maps, but next up, so I'm glad again to invite Antonio to the stage, uh, who will uh, talk about uh, a variant of Hello Antonio of uh, fair drop file e exchange application. So please, Antonio. Thank you, thank you, Chuck. Okay, so the idea that we got is right. We have Swarm already. Uh, so how do what what would be the basic, the minimum? Uh, usage that we could we could put on top of we can build on top of Swarm to make it easier for the user so that everybody can 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 actually use it. Uh, well, the easier it would be, of course. First, to upload a, upload a file and download a file, and that's a very trivial use use case. So let me go to this. Uh, so we created FairDrop, which is this FairDrop is uh, an application, it's running on top of Swarm. Um, so it's, uh, as I said, it's a federated on top of Swarm. And uh, the idea would be to decentralize a file. So anybody who wants to come here to home to this page will be able to, to decentralize a file. By that, it means that the file will be split, will be into the different nodes. It will arrive to the different uh, people who will host pieces of that file but only the owner, the, 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 only, the, the guys who holds the, the address can retrieve the file. So the idea is quite simple. It's basically you just drag and drop a file. However, this service will be available very soon and only for the guys, for, for, for you who have registered, are ready to opt in to receive products and, 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 and to, test, to, test try, to test drives and products that, that, uh, that we're going to run. So whenever you have this, uh, this page available, you will be able to put in here your MetaMask, uh, whitelisted MetaMask, or be or or or, or, unit, or your ENS name, and you will be able to drag and drop a file. Easy as that, and this is a key thing that we want. We are going. We are including, which, which is to, to ability to the ability to encrypt the file. When I say encrypt, 
of course, the file is going to be encrypted uh, in the cloud or in the different nodes, but the ability to encrypt the file locally so that only another Ethereum address, another public key, another ENS can decrypt the file. So you're sending a file only to an address, to just to an address. He, he's the only one who can retrieve and decrypt the file. Once you upload that file, well, actually uh, it goes back to the Swarm network and it starts doing its magic, which is basically splitting the file. As you know, the chunk is the, the, the very the, the smallest uh, unity of information that travels across the, across the network. It's gonna be split into chunks, generating manifest stamp in the chunks so that it can be persistent on the network. And once it's done, the file is uploaded. You will you'll have uh, a link and you'll have a balance. As I said, this is, uh, this is only for the test drives for the people who, are, who opt in to receive our, our, our products and, and, and services. And uh, well, there's some information on top of the, of the file. And of course, uh, you can add persistence to the file in case you will, you will need to have it for more time. And that's basically it. That's the idea. But this is just, just one file. What happens if you want to upload more files? And this is where third drive, another product comes into, into place. So I'm going to back to chart. Thank you, Antonio. That was a, a nice, uh, that was a nice segue into um, the next um, presentation, the next section. So we will continue with the first Swarm Fellowship. Uh, fellowships are a form of long-term collaboration between Swarm and external teams on public good solutions and protocols which contribute to the common and shared architecture. So the first Swarm Fellowship is related to data interoperability and sovereignty. It ar revolves around Fair Drive, which allows for easier access to decentralized data storage for individuals, individuals as well as applications using that storage through Fair Drive protocol. So currently its underlying storage is based on Faro SDFS, which uses Swarm as mentioned. The grander vision is that other storages that allow for sovereignty and interoperability could be mounted sort of uh, and used with the same front end for the user and the same app API for developers facilitating interoperability and easy switching between storage providers. So I will give the word to Devon from Linum Labs, um, the fellowship recipient who will present FairDrive together with her colleagues. So please, Devon, if you could tune in. Do we have Devon ready? Um, Michelle, maybe are you online? Can you? Uh -huh. oh, sorry, just checking. Yeah, uh, I saw you didn't know if my connection was actually working, so thank you no, for confirming. It's working, and I'm yeah. actually quite excited about all the things we are seeing. So, uh, do you still need me, or is the sorry? Yeah, you were just uh, yeah. You just I, I we complement each other, so I uh, ask you to check for the connection. Yeah, so I guess we're okay. Thank you. Um, and yeah, well, I I I seen Michal uh, pop up for a while, so I was worried that maybe I got disconnected. But yeah, we're all here. Um, and um, I guess, Michal, would, would you start? Uh, the and Devin's or? here as well now, actually. Uh -huh. I'm okay. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so hi, Devon. Hi, oh, Kirk. Yeah, so sorry about that. I was having a little bit. Uh, yeah, no problem. We all have uh, <laughs> connection issues. So um, yes, please, Devon, uh, go on. The introduction. Um, yeah, I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, my name is Devon, and I'm part of the team at Linum Labs. Um, and have my team do the demo um, of what we've been working on over the past few months with the Swarm team. Um, and before I hand over to Michal from my team, who will be giving you an intro to FairDrive and Mustafa, who will be doing a live demo for you, uh, I wanted to add on to Trent's announcement of the Swarm Fellowship um, just by saying that Linum Labs is the, is the first recipient of the Swarm Fellowship. And to us, it's quite a, um, an awesome opportunity for us. Um, uh, it's quite an awesome opportunity for us, uh, which we were presented with, to become a part of the larger evergreen community for Swarm. Um, for us, the Swarm Fellowship is also indicative of a longer term relationship between our team and Swarm as we continue to build and iterate on Fair Drive, um, supporting many dApps, and some of which will also be demoed today. Uh, we'd like to also just reiterate that Fair Drive for us is a, is a community driven initiative supported by the Fair Data Society ecosystem. 
Um, and with FairDrive, we hope to welcome developers to turn their ideas into dApps on FairDrive, as well as sponsors to join Swarm to create an even broader ecosystem of networks. Um, FairDrive's goal is um, that of one of empowering uh, its users um, with the possibilities that come with decentralization and self-sovereign storage for individuals and service developers. Um, the community has also then encouraged, um, we encourage developers to discuss and iterate on each other's projects, becoming a true community project in the context of their data. Um, with, with FairDrive, we, we take into action um, with our team our belief of user empowerment, allowing users to own their own data and our commitment to the Fair Data Society ecosystem. So we're really, really, really looking forward to uh, seeing where we'll go to from here, and we hope to hear from any developers or projects that are looking to build with Swarm and integrate with FairDrive. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say, and I'm happy to hand over to Michal now. Hi there, yes. Um, I'm just going to be sharing my screen. So yes, hi there, yes, yeah, I'm Michal. Um, I'm, I'm one of the team members from Linen Labs. Um, I've been working with Mustafa, who will take you through um, a live demo um, just in a few minutes time. But I just wanted to take this opportunity to explain uh, what we've been doing with FairDrive and what, and, and what we think it is. Um, yeah, so basically, what is FairDrive? Um, FairDrive is a community-driven initiative with a mission to empower data freedom. Um, we do think of this as a universal data organizational interface built on top of decentralized storage. Um, it will allow users to fully reclaim their privacy, own their data, and manage their digital identity. So how does it work? Um, it consists of a typical drive interface with files and folders paired with BZ wallets to manage token balances and key pairs. And under the hood, the first of many file systems, uh, FairOS, is running on top of Ethereum Swarm using the Fair Drive protocol to communicate and connect user content. Um, how it is, is designed. This first version of the Fair Drive Sandbox is designed to inspire developers and enable them to play with the possibilities of this universal data organizational interface and see how their own projects can be integrated. So therefore it is a neutral palette um, and has a very open uh, basic functionality uh, to form a strong foundation on which to build upon. Um, we also have the design file as a web-based open collaborative file for everyone to view and see. So, you know, demonstrating the utility of decentralized self-sovereign storage, uh, Fair Drive can serve as this front end and protocol for individuals and service developers who share the Fair Data Society principles of data privacy to transform the practicality of Web 2 to Web 3. So these principles include data sovereignty, uh, complete decentralization, uh, basis of consent, uh, fair data, and striving for a fair data economy, and of course, open source and interoperability of the entire ecosystem. We call this the best use case of fair drive right now. And so yes, in this demo, we'll go through some of these basic features we've been, we've been building, uploading, downloading, and creating um, that can show how developers can handle content, not only in the FairDrive UI, but also on any future apps built in and around FairDrive protocol. So here is a first glimpse of how your data can, and content can be on Swarm, yet also shared to uh, FairDrive. So um, yeah, with this, I'll give it over to Mustafa. Uh, Mustafa, you need to yeah thank you i always forget to unmute for some reason anyways i'm mustafa and i'm part of linum labs and we helped develop the fair drive protocol fair drive and a couple of apps that are going to be shown as proof of concept of data interoperability so they mentioned fair drive protocol a couple of times i won't go into details about fair os Fair Drive is a collection where a user can see all of his data. But most important thing here is the Fair Drive protocol. The Fair Drive protocol is a React app that has um, export uh, built for communicating with FairOS. So other developers can easily integrate the FairOS and store all their data on 
for now it's form, but in future it will be some other next steps compliance server. And he, uh, the fair, fair drive protocol is exporting all of the components for easy injectable apps and to use by other developers. But let's, let's see how that works. For example, this is a component that's used to log in on the Fair, uh, FairOS and we will receive the cookie and stored and authorized this app that is Markdown Editor. Oh, sorry, that is Markdown Editor and it will be used to save some data text. Try to authorize. Okay. So what I have now is I'm going to try to load all of my files that is currently on my fair, fair drive account. For, for example, this is my first text and it says it's my first text. Okay, but today the date is 21st June, 2021 and 16.21. Let's try to save it. Demo to create one. Let's try to save that file. Okay, it says it's saved, but let's check that out. One out. Uh, okay, but let's check the changes. Okay, if I switch to great great launch, it's it's saying that it it has read the file. So in this proof of concept markdown editor, we showed the data flow that we created a file, uploaded to the uh, B client and sh show the file that's being loaded. The other app that I'm going to show you is something like photo album that will, that's also using fair drive protocol and it's built on fair S and B clients. Just a sec, let me just load the app for a second. Okay, so as you see the similarity we are already inject, injecting the logging component from fair drive protocol. I will, after the, all the demos, I will uh, lead you to where to find the fair drive protocol itself. Our user is mark85 and password is password. Let's authorize this. As you can see on the side, it's loading the, the pods that uh, Trent mentioned that exist on fair S. So let's try to open the fair drive pod and wait for a second. So this pod has seven pictures on it. So it's representable pictures that are stored in my file, but let's try to upload one other picture. It's this and it says it's uploaded. So, but how can I be sure that it's up uploaded? Let's now go, go to, go to the end. It's fair drive itself. As Antonio mentioned already and gave awesome introduction to the fair drive itself. The fair drive app is showing user all of his data that's being flown through the uh, B clients and SAPS compliant servers and fair S. Login. Okay, so for now, as you can see, it uh, ha has couple uh, overview, landing page, uh, overview, home page that's still being developed. It's in sandbox mode, and you can contribute by visiting the GitHub repository and create issues or pull down the repository and start building features by yourself. So if I switch to my drive and to my private pods, and open my pod called fair drive, I should see all of my files. Let's switch this view and I should see pictures that uh, if I open Boba Fett, I should see Boba Fett. If I open Captain Phasma, I should see that. And this is the file that I uploaded recently, but to see it's really the truth of data interoperability is this file, demo the great one. And if I download it, let's see. We should have say, just a sec, second. Okay. Just 
a sec, just a sec. I'm trying to switch. Aha, uh -huh. it's this. I need to close this, switch this. As you can see, today is the 21st June, 1621. This is the proof of concept of data interoperability through FairJava protocol using FairJava and showing the data on FairJava's collection of users' data and two applications that are built on top of FairJava protocol itself. If you want to test it, it's already there and it's deployed on app.fairdatasociety.org. But if you, uh, as we see the Fair Data Society as a community driven um, organization, our, our, our idea is to have community improvement protocol where community decides what features are going to be updated, uploaded and implemented on FairDrive itself or FairDrive protocol or some other dApps that users and community wants to use. So if you are eager to play with it, the app, it's called FairDrive the app. All of these links can be found later on on our landing page that is going to be online in a couple of days. In readme file, you will see what is FairDrive protocol? How does the FairDrive work? how to run it locally uh, and how to run it locally with Ferris and B clients if you have it. And that's it from me. So thank you for your attention. And I hope that this demo was fun for you to watch as was fun for me to implement it. Thank you, Mustafa. That was a great demo. Uh, and uh, it's easy to enjoy the uh, doing this, I mean, uh, the demo and the app. So um, we're calling FairDrive the sandbox for fair data economy as we see it could be used uh, to try out new use cases fitting for the upcoming data economy, of course, done following fair data principles. And now we move on to the section of demos from the ecosystem. So in this part, we feature some projects that are building on Swarm to see the applicability and the use cases that are being pursued. and. Uh, um also uh, jog the imagination so the first one is mem generator it is a very fun and playful implementation of users generating names that could be stored on fair drive for convenience of access so the fair drive that um, mustafa has just uh, demoed uh, with larger ambitions of becoming a feature rich entertainment platform so uh, if we can run the video please Hello, my name is Ihar. I am a member of the Swarm Grant program. My project is a meme generator. Uh, I think memes are very important. Uh, they raise the mood and raise the problem of society. Memes make a lot of money, for example, Dogecoin. Uh, login uh, into the application. For this, I used uh, the login component from 5Drive protocol. Uh, we get to the page with templates for memes. Uh, there are many templates in my application for uh, every taste. So, uh, page my uploads. Uh, this page displayed it, uh, all the memes uh, that the uh, user has created. This meme, memes uh, which I created. Uh, meme download from Swarm and displayed. So, uh, let's try to create it a new meme. Uh, I can choose a suitable template and uh, create meme. So, example. Uh, upload to Swarm. Go to page my uploads. Oh, three memes. And we see that our created memes has appeared. So, nice. 
Now we can go to FireDry app and see that the generate memes is also displayed. Go FireDrive app, login, meme test. login so these three memes uh, which uh, I created Whoa. this meme uh, which created now fine uh, in the future, I plan to develop this project into a full-fledged uh, entertainment platform. I want to add a lot of new features for creating memes. Users will not only be able to create memes, but also view other people's memes, share and donate to the best uh, authors. Thank for attention. Good luck. So these kind of fun projects are really a breeze of fresh air and a wonderful opportunity to bring adoptions of adoption of users. So uh, Antonio, um, can you join quickly? So you're big on memes. So what do you think? I bet your fingers are itching to use the app. Actually, I still feel a bit uh, worried since Reddit uh, banned me a couple of times. I'm not going to say why, but uh, yeah, that this is something that I clearly could 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 use. Thank you. So um, moving on, let's look at another playful yet very useful PasteB app from Pit that mimics the PasteB, PasteB application of Web2. So if you can join us, Pit. Hey, guys. Oh, hi, Pit. Let me just right. share my screen. Uh, there we go. Hopefully you guys can see that. That's obviously not the right thing. It's the right thing. So uh, this is PasteB, which I think quite a lot of you might have already seen. Um, this is the first in the kind of series of, of kind of simple, useful, user-first applications that we're, that we're building on, on the Swarm infrastructure. The, uh, the, this, so PasteB is, is a sort of a clone of Pastebin, which some of you might have used. It's like the simplest way of, of uh, sharing content online and in the Swarm infrastructure, it's un unstoppable. Uh, it's a way of publishing content online. So this is sort of version one that you're looking at at the moment. I'll play the video and, uh, and talk you through what's happening. So the idea is that you can simply input text. It's designed so, so the UI allows you to be able to input long and short form text. Once you're ready to share, click on the paste button. That provides you with a unique URL with a hash, uh, which you can share with anyone that you, that you want to. Uh, anyone can kind of edit that at any time, re-upload to Swarm and share again. So there you go, that's all of that happening. You can see the uh, see the changes. The PaceBee is fully responsive, so it works, works well on mobile, looks great on tablet as well, um, which is all very lovely. Um, Yes, as you can see, it's very sort of simple. If you want more information, there's a, a about us page. Click on the question mark at the top. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of our sort of plans for the future with this at the moment, so uh, we're we're in development on on version two. Uh, version two will will bring a, a quite a few uh, feature enhancements, things like uh, code hi highlighting and um, text formatting, stuff like that. Um, as well as obviously uh, a better implementation with uh, B version one. Um, in terms of like further into the future, we're looking at the, the possibility of getting document versioning in here, um, as well as a bunch of other bits and bobs. So that's PaceB. Um, yeah. Thank you, Pete, uh, for this presentation. So I. Uh, I'm not a developer myself, but uh, when I do some like uh, something with code or anything, I know that uh, 
uh, paste bin is very, very useful well, for reporting errors, for example. And uh, having it on, on Swarm uh, is uh, really a good step forward. And with all the upgrades that you're planning. So um, thank you, Pete. Thank you. And next up, so uh, the Deplets project. Uh, Deplets aims to be to embed its Deplets into web pages and offer additional information uh, via this uh, uh, by injecting its content into the web page content. So the underlying storage for presented use case is Swarm, and we have a recorded video that uh, would uh, we could please play now. Hello, everyone. My name is Dmitry Palchu. I am the founder of Project Tablets, and we are building the web of unstoppable augmentations. What is the augmented web, and what do we do there? Tablets is a platform that allows you to create applications, and these applications insert widgets like badges or buttons into third-party websites without asking owner of that website for cooperation. Let's see two examples. The first example is a fake news stamp. It allows the community to place a stamp uh, on the top of the tweet or start the workflow to manage this stamp. In the second example, you can see the My Nifty Collection doublet, and it allows a user to show his, his NFT collection and embed it into his profile or place it on the top of the avatar or place in the pattern group like three or four. All in all, Daplets allows you to place own workflows on the top of existing websites and communities. But why do we need augmented web? Because the web is broken currently. It was designed as the web of owned websites, but it used as the web of user content aggregated by others. Just a small example, the HTTP code redirect 301 and 302 makes sense for the whole website twitter.com, but it makes no sense for single tweet. Aggregators are controlling the other people's data, and as a consequence, we have deplatforming and censorship and other kinds of uh, power misuse by aggregators. Why do we need Swarm? Because if you would like to fix the web, we need a decentralized system that can handle the pressure of the might media agents. Dublet platform is the one. It is fully decentralized, and that's why Dublet's platform needs ROM to store augmenting apps, Dublets, and user settings. If two examples wasn't too exciting to you, I just show you the third one that we have implemented. It's a YouTube downloader, and YouTube downloader allows you to upload video into the Swarm and to make it available to the public. After the video becomes available, it can't be deleted anymore. And in order to make it available, we can just insert search results from Swarm into the search results of YouTube, like here. The first example here, the first search result with a Swarm icon is from a tablet, not from YouTube. And if we click on it, we go to the Swarm. The YouTube downloader consists essentially of two parts. The first part is content processing, and the second part is content promotion or the content propagation. And we can improve both of these parts. For content processing, we will add more stickers and checks and essentially make a commenting tool. You will be able to place arrows or other widgets and comment this video. We can also improve the content visibility. We will create a general search result injection, which means we will insert this form search results not only into YouTube, but into other websites. It could be Google, it could be Yahoo, it could be essentially any website with a search built in. Last but not least, Dublin's project is not a single application. It's a platform to easily build apps, augmenting apps. 
to build the web of unstoppable augmentations. Thank you and see you at doublets.org and let's build the web of unstoppable augmentations together. Well, I, I think this is a very interesting approach that would, that could uh, augment a lot of uh, web pages. But uh, maybe Dimitri, if you are uh, with us, uh, maybe I could ask you a quick question. So, uh, this. Yes, I'm here. Oh, hello, hi. So this technology looks like it could be used in uh, connection with many use cases. So, what kind of projects could use this? So where do you see the possible collaborations? Oh. Um... As I said, uh, if we have a content stored uh, on Swarm, uh, then we have a possibility to insert links to this content into third party websites. Uh, and essentially, um, any website with a huge community, like any social network, uh, could be the target. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this is my idea. Uh, we think. Uh, Betting, uh, sport betting could be the very interesting use case. Um, um, uh, what could it be? And search engines in general, right, Dimitri? So uh, you could, uh, like you did in the use case, uh, injecting the results in there, I guess uh, it's a, um, a Yes, it's one, one, of the, uh, one of the endless uh, possibilities to augment uh, third party content. Yeah. Essentially, if we, if we, insert results into the Google, Google, we uh, hijack the website. Uh, yeah, I don't know uh, if it's good or not, but so it's some we, kind yeah. of... Uh... We just need now uh, like uh, um, uh, somebody to crawl the swarm and, and index everything, right? Uh, and you will yes, inject, yes, yes. inject it. So yeah, it's not a hijacking, you know, it's probably the word uh, but uh, we just um, make, we give, users uh, much more power than uh, they will be given from the website owner, essentially. Because... Thank you, Dmitry, uh, for tuning in and for the presentation. And next up, so a very interesting, uh, well, all of the projects are interesting, but this one uh, goes into some specifics of Swarm. So Waggle project will present an alternative to current ways of communication, which aims to be much more secure and privacy preserving in many ways as well as more spam resistant. So they are involved with Swarm for a while now and are really knowledgeable. So leveraging the cutting edge features the Swarm has to offer in this respect. So they will first have a presentation of their ideas and then a demo of the apl application they're working on. So uh, please play the first video. Thank you for the introduction and uh, good afternoon everyone. And welcome to this exclusive preview of Waggle. The Waggle Dance is the name of the communication protocol used between honeybees. And we have adopted this name and are currently developing Waggle as a spam free, privacy preserving, secure communication protocol on Swarm. So, just like the honeybees, we envision that the bee nodes will dance when performing our protocol. Currently, we are only two working on Waggle, and that's me, Rasi Nygor, and Rodrigo Saramago which will show you a demo afterwards. Uh, we are both students at the University of Stavanger. So before explaining Waggle, I will br briefly talk about some of the problems that exist in existing email services. So the first issue is spam. And uh, of course, nobody likes spam, yet it's proven to be a difficult problem to solve over time. In traditional, traditional email services, when a sender transmits a message, it will eventually end up in the inbox of the recipient. The, the inbox is typically hosted by your email provider. Uh, thus, a spammer consumes thousands of gigabytes of storage on the inboxes across the world. Uh, to, com to combat this spam, uh, the email providers run advanced spam filters, which require a lot of communication and needs to be constantly updated and fine-tuned as spammers are constantly evolving and finding ways past this filter. Uh, another issue with traditional email services are limitations on privacy. Many email providers openly admits that the email are not encrypted 
and uh, that they have the power to read it. Often they will disguise this by saying that they only scan for spam. Other services like ProtonMail encrypt the email, but they still access some of the metadata when uh, uh, using the spam filter. Even though uh, SMTP is conceptually a decentralized protocol, uh, this only accounts for the outbox. Uh, the inbox is centralized by protocols such as IMAP and POP3, which gives the email providers the power to deny any user access to their data. So now you might ask, um, what about Waggle? In Waggle, uh, we have adopted an old idea called IM2000, where the main idea is shifting the responsibility of storing emails from the receiver to the sender. In Swarm, we implemented this by letting all messages remain in the sender's outbox feed until the recipient is ready to read the messages. This in itself uh, would drastically limit spam, as now a spammer would essentially have to either pay someone to host his messages or he has to run a large server himself. In Vagal, we however take this one step further uh, by requiring that the recipient pre approves any communication. After accepting communication, the recipient establishes a secure end to end encrypted communication channel with the sender. We store all messages on the Swarm network. However, as they are encrypted, no unauthorized party can read them. So here is a big picture overview of the Vagal protocol. The, uh, for in the first contact, we send a notification from Alice to Bob. And if Bob accepts, both Alice and Bob will create an outbox, a secure outbox that only the other party can access. Uh, to transmit notifications, we use the PSS functionality of Swarm. These notifications contain the necessary uh, information to start setting up secure communication. They are encrypted using the public key of the recipient and encapsulated in a Trojan chunk, which is delivered by the Swarm network to the recipient's B node. By using Trojan chunks, we essentially force the sender to spend some communication in mining the chunk and thus prevent any spam of notification. Upon decrypting a notification, the recipient can choose to either agree or reject the communication entirely. If he accepts, we establish a secure channel between the parties using the swarm feeds functionality. The security of the messages will then rely on the double ratchet algorithm. Uh, so here's a more detailed uh, communication flow or sequence flow of the notification protocol. After uh, Alice, Alice uh, re retrieves Bob's contact information from a public source such as Keybase, or she can get it offline directly from Bob. She then notifies Bob using PSS, and Bob uh, chooses what he wants to do with this notification. Uh, if Bob accepts, he uh, adds Alice to his address book, and then he agrees with Alice to uh, create an outbox feed. In this outbox feed, he acknowledges to Alice that everything is set up on his side, and when Alice receives this notification, she agrees with Bob to set up her outbox. After this, they have um, essentially established a secure communication channel between them. So when uh, either of them now wants to send emails, emails to each other, they can simply write the content and then they encrypt it using the keys that they uh, agreed upon previously. And uh, whenever Bob is connected to the Swarm network, and he is ready to re read the messages from Al Alice. His Vagal client will pull the feed updates from Alice's outbox, and then he decrypts the content. And then as Alice will uh, know that Bob have received the email, Bob uh, she, she will delete it, and um, 
Bob must then choose if he wants to make a backup. So he can either make a backup, backup of, on Swarm or offline, or he can, of course, choose the, to discard it entirely. So I think that was enough talk. And uh, now I will send you to Rodrigo, which will show you a demo of our prototype. Uh, right, so to start to use Wago, uh, the first thing is to log in and we use MetaMask. So you need to uh, log in your MetaMask account here. And here I will log in with two users. So I will log in here uh, with Bob. And this one here, I will log in with the other user. That is um, Alice. Right, so Alice uh, does not have Bob as a contact. So she needs to add his contact card. To do that, she goes to some uh, social network or she should receive this contact card from Bob or get it from any social network. So here, for example, Bob hosted his contact card on Keybase and Alice can go there and download this information that will be necessary to uh, establish the secure communication. So let's download here the file. Uh, and after download, she goes to the contact uh, and click here to upload a contact based on the file. This is the Bob contact card information that is also here, right? So she can give a nickname for him, for example. Something like that, and add his contact. Yeah. So now uh, Alice can send a notification to Bob to attempt to start the first contact with uh, Bob. Set my contact, please, for example. And then she sends a notification. When she sends a notification, the notification is mine, and Bob received. Uh, based on the overlay address of his node. So this will be, uh, the chunk will be mine and eventually arrive here a notification for Bob. Then uh, Bob can accept or deny this contact. And he, if he accepted, this will automatically uh, add Alice in his contacts and will uh, also send a notification back to, uh, to, to Alice telling that uh, Bob accepted her. And this information here is also based on the contact card of uh, Alice that they exchange uh, using PXS. And now Bob and Alice can secure exchange of, uh, emails using the feeds. To do that, uh, for example, Alice can just go um, here and compose and send a message like, um, hello, Bob. Um, here uh, and then she can send a message uh, here and this message will create the feed of which Bob is listening to and then when the messages arrive to the node Bob can retrieve and read the Alice's message and Bob can do the same now because he will have the contact and yeah Uh, for example, and then eventually the message arrived for Alice. Uh, sometimes took a bit until the yes, and <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so this is basically uh, the demo. Uh, if you want to um, know more about, uh, we will publish uh, a demo publicly so you can interact with um, with Algo and use yourself and try yourself. Uh, if you are interested more in, in the project, you can reach us uh, on GitHub or also by our current emails or even using Wago. Uh, this is our contact card. So you can send notifications and message to us using this information. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much for listening. Any questions? 
actually, I would have some questions. So, um, uh, Rodrigo and Arsini, if you could uh, tune in, if you are with us. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. hello. Yes, you challenged hello. me, so <laughs> hello. Um, so, I think this uh, really shows great potential uh, as a replacement for currently mainstream technologies. And we are really, really looking forward to seeing how this project evolves. But uh, I guess the whole communication stack, uh, so to say, could be replaced. Uh, but maybe so um, could you share your future plans uh, and what is yet to come uh, yes of yes. course uh, uh, well actually we would like to uh, establish wago as a, a library for secure messaging communication in peer-to-peer -peer networks uh, so this is uh, our goal to, to make it as an open source library and we want to improve the app to represent the same user experience that you can get from the mainstream emails uh, and also allow uh, people to install plugins and stuff to, you know, we start to use Wago without too much dependence of the running a node and eventually easy the migration to people from the mainstreams in AOS to Wago. So this is our goal. <laughs> yeah, user experience is a big issue with, with uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, current adapts, so to say. So looking forward to this. Thank you, Rodrigo and Racine. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And um, and we move on to the next project. So Eterna has an ambition very fitting for the Swarm ecosystem. So imagine your videos would no longer be hosted at one of the large video platforms, but instead by your peers on the Swarm network. And you could look at them without being bothered with advertisements and so on. So the next demo will show a glimpse of this possibility and also how you could connect your vid videos in FairDrive with the video player they developed. So uh, please, the video. Hello, I'm Mirko da Corte from Eterna. We are building an innovative and decentralized video platform based on Swarm. I will show you today a preview of it uh, with also an additional experimental integration with the Fair Drive from Fair Data Society. This uh, is the main page of our DAP running on localhost. Um, you can see here there is some settings like uh, the referred index, you can change it or uh, you can uh, change also the referred gateway, this is the B gateway and uh, here we have the integration with the third drive, we will see it and uh, aside of this we have uh, a third drive file explorer, now I'm going to log in all right we are in this is empty how you can see and now i'm going to log in into our dap so here you can see we have uh, several options we can log in with uh, web free so we are going to sing a, a message with uh, metamask and uh, this will log in as into the DAP. Here you can see my account. Now I have to log in also to third drive here. So no, of course, reload. All right, it is signaled. Okay, now we are going to upload a sample video. We can choose uh, if you upload uh, into Swarm or Fair OS. Uh, now we have to unlock the pod. Open connection, perfect. All right, now we have to select the video. Upload. We select an also a thumbnail. All right, and of course add a title. Synergy. Add video. Perfect. Now we have uploaded the video. Uh, we can see it here. But also, if you go to the file explorer. 
we can see there is a, um, a new Eterna folder with the new uploaded uh, video inside here, inside here. And uh, here also we can see uh, the video and play it. And uh, we have a button for uh, uh, watch it into Eterna. Link into this page. All right, it works. We also see here we have a, a comment section and a vote section. And we, for example, can add uh, uh, a comment. Wow, this is a great collaboration. Perfect. And upvote, of course. Clicking again to the file, we see this is uh, updated because a third dive communicates with our index and uh, we see the, the comment. All right, it works. So this was a, a first uh, sample from us and uh, a lot of more uh, have to come. And if you want to see more about us, you can visit our website at uh, eterna.io. Thank you. So Mirko, if uh, you are with us, maybe you could uh, join live. Hello, Mirko. So nice to Hello. see you. Hello, Sword. I'm so, very excited to be here. Thank you. So that was a really great video showcasing also the use of Fair Drive and how uh, you put your player as a widget, widget right? Uh, if I say so. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, how do you see the ecosystem of video platforms evol evolving? And maybe most importantly, when will we be using Ethereum on Swarm? Of course. I believe uh, and uh, we believe that uh, the new uh, video platform will move, have to move their economics from advertisers to users at first. And we are uh, following this, uh, this idea. And um, we are working for a release a uh, first public uh, version this year. And uh, we are working really hard. <laughs> If you visit our website, you can see how, how you can help us. So uh, great, uh, asking everyone to check uh, um, out uh, Eterna's website and see how you can help. So please, thank you, Mirko, for, uh, for this. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye, Mirko. Uh, and uh, so we move to the next sec uh, section, actually. So uh, ecosystem next steps. So we hope that we have demonstrated the efforts and current evolution of the ecosystem to some degree, but we of course uh, have plans to support the ecosystem uh, to enable it to flourish even further. Uh, so today the latest uh, grant call closes, uh, but uh, further grant calls will be announced shortly. Grants are meant to support smaller projects that contribute to the ecosystem. So subscribe to Swarm newsletter, follow the blog for more information. Uh, additionally, new fellowships will be structured, structured and announced. As said earlier, fellowships are longer-term partnerships with projects building major pieces needed by the ecosystem. Uh, we're also working on providing workshops, summer school, and an accelerator for startups uh, that would help gain missing knowledge maybe on the business side and help uh, grow projects grow in that way. So um, I'll ask Robert to join us and speak a few words about that as he's um leading these efforts so robert please thank you Chert. let me share the overview of the screen you should have it full screen now yes robert yeah wonderful Yes, we've seen some uh, examples already shown of uh, projects who, uh, which joined uh, the Swarm, some previous grantees as well. And we uh, intend to grow this ecosystem uh, through various efforts, uh, specifically by a list of workshops we want to host uh, throughout the summer and up until uh, uh, next year. Uh, we have a Swarm summer school coming up in uh, August, containing a, uh, a variety of uh, workshops to aid you in the development of your project. So not just 
uh, technically, but also focus on other aspects of running and growing your organization. These are meant for startups, independent uh, developers, or research projects and NGOs. So um, if you do intend, uh, or if you're building already on a depth uh, focused on data sovereignty or interoperability, uh, feel free to join these uh, to meet like-minded individuals uh, and other teams and gain feedback as well. Specifically, if you are uh, working on a startup in which you want to grow and scale, we have the acceleration program called Honeycomb, which launches in September. Uh, it's an eight-week program in which we focus on all aspects related to your, uh, on your project to have it grow and make the next steps. So not just, uh, as mentioned, not just technical, but also, okay, how to grow your organization, what legal aspects will be involved, uh, working on your business model, and for that we gather um, speakers uh, to aid you, uh, mentors and uh, trainers as well. Uh, this is for, dark, for startups focusing on data processing and data generation and also for data providers. So um, we try to get both parties uh, aligned in to come to a fair data society. If you're interested with your project in one of these options, uh, follow our newsletter and blog and our publications because uh, we'll be releasing soon more information on how to join. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Mm, so uh, finally, uh, on the topic of data providers. So um, we're planning to support public data sharing and maintaining public data sets by the community by providing re rewards to, um, we call them data stewards, those in the community maintaining public data sets so that the community and society can benefit. So um, as said, uh, uh, join the newsletter, uh, follow the blogs to know more about this. And at this point, uh, actually, Michelle, now I would pass the microphone to you. Thank you for your help previously. Yes, here I am. Hello. So that, I'm a that was quite a segment, actually. That was like, that was like literally packed with information and great demos. And I'm, I'm like blown away by it. So you know, that, was, that was really inspirational. Thanks, John. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, the, um, my thanks again to the uh, projects presenting. They were really interesting. And now I will tune out and. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Bye -bye. I will see you. I will see you later um, um, at our shared location. Um, so, yeah, it was amazing. So we are really near the end of our event here, um, but mm -hmm. of course um, we still have to hear from what I would call, you know, the most important people that made this project and what it is today. So I would love for Victor Tron, Gregor, Daifier, I'm trying to pronounce it correctly, and Daniel Nagy, I, I would love to see you guys. Um, if you're there, please. Anyone? Hello, hello. Ah, here's Victor hello. already. Hello. Hello. Okay. Well. Hello. Okay, guys, I'm going to try and switch my, my screen here so I can see you all. There you are. Um, so I'll, I'll ask a question and I'll also state your name because otherwise it's going to be like totally chaotic. To start off, Gregor, how are you feeling? And I love that t-shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I feel like that t-shirt. You know, uh, that's why the t-shirt is on. It's been an amazing journey. Uh, and uh, today we launched a lot of stuff i think we saw a lot of things and it's uh i haven't processed it yet i'm actually yeah, i think it's going to come after me yeah i so. totally understand i'll have the same thing i I'll, I'll probably need like a few days to even like realize everything that was you know presented and said and and you know i i have uh, this this special thing so gasper i hope you're ready but can you share that picture that i wanted to show so guys uh, especially like um yeah it's really hard but in this picture i'll, I'll first describe it eh? so this picture is defcon zero ethereum defcon point zero and if you look very closely um you will see danny and victor uh at the left of the picture so i, I just wanted to show this picture to you guys because um you know, I, I, I sort of feel like I missed this moment in Ethereum, but I'm so happy I can be in Swarm for this moment. Victor, do you, do you sort of feel uh, the same vibe? 
Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty similar. It's very exciting. It's like, uh, I mean, that was that was really the inception of everything. That that that, that, that from zero. It's it's hard to compare it to anything else. Really, that was that was a really very serious, serious historic moment. But I would say that this is when 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 the idea of swarm really uh, got got um, born. Wait. And 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 just maybe I take the opportunity now to give credit to those people at Ethereum who, who made this possible and who were really the, 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 the fathers of the idea. So, so Gavin, Gavin Wood, uh, who together with, together with Vitalik and, and Jeff basically came up with this idea of the Holy Trinity and so, soon after the Ethereum uh, was conceptualized, it's, they, they realized that this can be used for to, to, to end up in the new internet. Uh, and then create a, create a word computer of some sorts. And, and, and I would also credit some, some other people, uh, in particular Alex, Alex uh, Leverington, who was the uh, author of the Deaf Peer to Peer uh, protocol there, and has a lot of experience in, in, in this kind of peer to peer systems. And he was, he was the, the one who contributed quite a bit of the, the initial networking ideas. Um, I'm not saying I'm not saying that a lot of his ideas uh, remained in Swarm, but that he was, was definitely an inspiring uh, and contributed to this. And of course, thanks goes to the, the entire Ethereum team, who, who uh, together with the, with the foundation as well, who, who uh, incubated and and, and 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 basically supported us throughout the years uh, and, and supported the the, the the research that that analyzed. The, the, the current product that we, we launch now. So a huge thanks to, to them, to the foundation, and to Ethereum specifically. Yeah, I think I think we, we, we all can share that sentiment, Victor. I, I want to go to Danny now because Danny, um, you know, you are on, in that picture of the of Defcon Zero, I think it, it was called. Um, you know, how does it feel for you? Like most, maybe you should say like, what do you do in this project? So I'm mostly doing architecting and, and research. Uh, so uh, at that point zero, I already made a presentation about how we envision Swarm. And uh, well, actually, I would say that that particular presentation held up pretty well. So if, if you listen to it now, it's kind of sort of how how it turned out to be, because it was not very uh, rich on details. That was a, a saving grace. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's been almost seven years now. And I must say that in the beginning, nobody, not a single person estimated correctly how difficult it would be. So nobody would have expected it to last this long. It so should what, have been. What was the what was the, the, the sentiment back then? What, what did you say like in this amount of time we will we will you know have it? Two years, three years maybe. But oh, definitely. Still, it's still it's still a long time. It's still I mean I heard people predict like like oh we'll scale Ethereum in like three months. So I mean Well Ethereum, yes, but Swarm as a subsystem, it was already understood that it would take a year or two. But, but yeah, it turned out to be a lot, lot more difficult than anybody could have imagined. So here we have an interplay of peer-to-peer uh, -peer networking, emergent behavior of self-interested actors, peculiarities of storage. Also, we got basically bumped head on into the growing pains or scaling pains of Ethereum. So yeah, it was, there were many, many unforeseen difficulties, and even the foreseen ones turned out to be much, much more demanding than we imagined. But here we are launching 1.0 today. And uh, well, hopefully things will work. <laughs> yes, yes, we, we, we all certainly <laughs> hope that things will work. At least to the extent that that is reasonable to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, 
definitely there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, anticipation because what we've seen in the market for the token is unbelievable like how how people are snapping up buzz is just defies defies belief mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. okay so um, Wait, to me. yeah uh, also, I think what I would really like to see is uh, people actually using Swarm. So I would like to see some dApps which don't need uh, any backend infrastructure to have Swarm as either one of their hosting providers or maybe even their main hosting provider. It would be nice to, to see dApps live on Swarm because that's the primary purpose. That's why that, that's the, you know, the reason that the, the, the reason for Swarm to exist, why it was envisioned back in 2014 to host dApps. And uh, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing dApps double first and then wholeheartedly migrate to Swarm in the yeah. coming weeks. So, so Gregor, I know you are always looking forward in the future. You know, you, you seldom look back or, or think about things that happen. So what is, what are you thinking about now? Are you, are you at least standing still for a second realizing what, what an important moment this is? Or are you still, are you already thinking about the future? Well, you know, of course, we, we have uh, future plans, but if you like right now, I've been actually really thinking, watching all this and it's, uh, you know, before you ask me how, how I feel, it's the whole journey has been amazing and we didn't maybe mention the people aspect, you know, it's like the Swan team has grown like to about 40 people in a year and going towards 1.0 it's it was like also really big bonding it's uh we got to know each other the vibe in the team it's really buzzing doesn't matter you know if uh, you listen to the dev guys or to the ops guys who try to figure out how to launch the token it's like this this passion you know i'm, I'm really grateful for that it's like a humbling experience and uh maybe in this regard, my biggest wish is that we continue like that. We, that as a team, we, we grow, we are, uh, become stronger and that this pluriness or however we call it, you know, spills over into the ecosystem. And uh, yes, you know, that this one just grows and we yeah, continue. I think, I think you can already see that. Eh? We, we watched all these demos and there are so many people enthusiastic about yeah. you know, what Swarm is and, and what we can achieve with it. So before you make me cry, Gregor, and <laughs> Victor, because he often make me, makes me smile. Um, <laughs> Victor, uh, like, if, if this is going to be maybe be like a, a really weird question, but you know, for you, this must be a very special moment. But like, what would you like to see like in the coming three months? Honestly, holiday. <laughs> <laughs> In, in all seriousness, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's one. I, mean, I would like to see people use it, and I would like to see people use it because it is useful and it's working. Uh, I truly believe that that we, we achieved a very significant milestone with this with this release. Uh, um, our development methodology and then like and last minute uh, changes uh, might 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 deter some people from from uh, you know. Validating the 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 the, 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 the hiccups in kind of a different way, but I, I think I think I think we got, we got something stable to, to to show today, and and uh, I, I I I wish I wish uh, that, that, that those features that, that didn't make it to the one point or release will be uh, duly and, and like anticipated by by the by the by the users, and I, I really I really hope that. That in in the, in, the, in the coming year we will realize a lot, a lot of the lot of the the, 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 the gems and 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 and, and, and real, real uh, um, 
have killer features that we that we advertise over the, over the years, including including the access control, the the the, 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 the error error coding and, and resilience and all kinds of other features. Uh, I, I I really really think that this this is a, this is a, this is a really crucial moment. And, uh, can new paradigm might, might start with this, and then which we can pave, pave the way to, to proper proper decentralized uh, uh, internet and, and and applications, which also not not only not only have cautious we put as as as, as Danny, Danny would say like the 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 the, the, the applications that have no no backend component can can be respond, but in fact pave the way to a, to a, to a infrastructure. There's some backend component can also run on this one in a kind of similar similar way to, to what's already been demonstrated by by by, by Lego, for example, about communication that is these components, including uh, database services, something to involve and hopefully support of much more uh, sophisticated applications than they just the just statics type hosting. Including maybe like the things like Reddit, etc. So, so I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next period. And now I'm just I am I'm, I'm, I'm a bit agitated. I have to say it's a really big moment for me, kind of a moment of truth, and, and also a big big relief that finally we can reach this stage. This is kind of our brainchild with, with Donnie, and, and and I think. It's quite, 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 quite moving that to, to, to live, live this moment through, and, and uh, it was, it was, it was long overdue. And maybe I also have this chance to, to thank, thank the team and thank my, thank my friend Danny and, and Gregor to, to, to support uh, to, to all these difficulties and, and kind of persevere uh, over the years. Against all austerities and you know, all kinds of problems and you know, problems with the perception of Swam and also with these struggles in the financial uh, department. So, uh, thank you very much for, for your support and, and big, big, huge thanks goes to the team, uh, with all the new who, who, who contributed uh, to this project and, 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 and give me really, really all the credit goes to them. And it comes to the product that's going to come out today. And yeah, thank you, everyone. And thanks, thanks a lot for the community for the unrelenting support over the years. And, and, and thanks for your patience. And I hope, hope it's going to pay off. Thanks. Yeah. So, so now you're you're still making me cry, Victor. So that's that's not fair. I mean, if if I want to have tears, I go to Gregor. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so, Gregor, yeah, I, I, do, do you, I would love to just, I think by now, I think everything has been said, no? Or, or do you have it's, like, thing up on your sleep? Because sometimes you know, I was, I was like thinking also, in a way, really, as Victor pointed out, the team really, I was thinking like, who, who I could say, like, who are the rock stars, you know, like, who, who, who were standing out, and then I realized I would need to at least the whole team. Well, it's start like, by looking in the mirror, Gregor. It's no, it's it's amazing. It's everybody, everybody in the team, and really, even even uh, outside of Swarm, you know, it's like not just the team, also uh, the support, especially in the past couple of months and years, uh, also that we got, and the ecosystem and everybody. It's yeah, I'm. I'm just beyond grateful for everything at this moment. And yeah, I'm also about to cry. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I really, I really want to point this out. Um, I, Gregor, and I think I can speak for the entire team. We want to thank you because you did an amazing job leading this team from, you know, a bunch of hackers basically to a well-oiled organization that actually achieves things and can deploy things and can go to production. And so this is, you know, you did an amazing job. Uh, doing that and I, I, I yes thank you thank you so, but it's, well, yeah, you it's not a solo play it's not, it's no, a, I know but you know this yeah. needs to, this I think it was yeah. high time this this was set in one of these live events because you know we thank were you. joking and playing around but you know you're actually doing like, this amazing job so thank you so much
from the whole Thank team. You. I can, I think I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're coming near the end. I think this is like a, a good note to end it. I just want to ask, these guys are like really special, I think, to us. Um, yeah, everybody who is giving support in Discord, can you please show your face? I mean, you don't have to show your face, or just do like a, you know, we just want to, look, there's like Philippe, Philippe is PhiloZoom in um, exactly <laughs> in our, our PhiloZoom, Philo. Uh, we have, um, who else do we have here? There we have L definitely. Hey, from the US. I think, yes, yes or from a VPN somewhere, I should say. Uh, and we have Rox, who is also like quite active in the Discord. Guys, he did like an amazing job the last couple of weeks giving support, helping people, you know, run run like test notes and, and you know, it was, I know it was a crazy job, but you guys did an amazing job. So thank you so much for helping us out. Great job. Um, so anyone else on the call, please feel free to show your face. Come on guys, the whole ecosystem is here. So we should celebrate that. Look at that. You know, I can truly say that we're like totally international here. It's like all over the world, these people. And, you know, now that we have this like beautiful screen filled of tiles with like this amazing talent. Look at that Linum Labs there. That's amazing. Hi, Linum Labs. So they're already drinking champagne in South Africa. Uh, we're going to do that too, I hope, in uh, Budapest. Um, so guys um, from Budapest this time, I wish you all a wonderful future swarm and many, many more versions uh, than 1.0. I love you all and I'll see you soon. Edina, hi. So yeah, that's it, I guess. Let's go listen to Blur music, Blur Buzz Radio and celebrate in real life. See you all, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. -bye. <laughs> <laughs>